7.30 here on Channel 5. In the news tonight, bands of gunmen identified as Hanafi Muslims are holding more than 100 hostages at three buildings in Washington, D.C. Jan, Karl, Raspe and Gudrun Engstein. Furcht war es, das zu töten, aber nicht andere nur auch uns töten, wir wenn es nicht. Na Kurskom, Vakzale. Это были жители Армении. Затикян, Степанян и Багдасарян. Члены армянской националистической группировки. Взрывы в Москве они устроили с одной целью. Макс Робинсон, a Washington newsman, caught in the middle of the Hanafi Muslim story. Is the press an unwitting ally of the terrorists, or only a hostage itself? Uh, they're going to kidnap me. We're going to start on the Bertrand Bridge at 9 o'clock. Everyone starts climbing at 9 o'clock. We'll get there. 6.30 in the morning in a Delancey Street loft, a last-minute briefing of a half-dozen commando artists. Their mission, assault on the major bridges of New York. Uniform, bright-colored jumpsuits under safety harnesses, tools, flags, mirrors, smoke bombs, targets, the Verrazano, George Washington, Triborough, Brooklyn, Manhattan, and Williamsburg bridges. It began as a little joke uh, between Greg and myself, uh, having to do with uh, the nature and uh, consistent terrorist acts. The possibility exists for us to work with the media, and as a result of working with the media, affect possibly a very large change in the world. I received a telephone call from New York City from John Halpern uh, asking me if I'd like to climb uh, some of the suspension bridges in Manhattan. And uh, after about 15 seconds I said yes. And this uh, idea of having different people together to uh, do something in a different medium and just, uh, and I guess the media in this case was the medium and uh, very directly, very purely in a way. And I like that after thinking about it. It looked relatively easy. Little did I know that it was going to be so difficult. And I had to, it was a difficult bridge to climb. I had to use my harness. These hook around the cable on each side and back to myself, preventing me from falling. And it took me 10 minutes to get to the top of the bridge. Up here is where I affixed my banner and lit my flare. And at that particular moment, the sun came out, and it just made me feel uh, strong, free, independent, like I'd really done something beautiful. And I looked down to the ground, and I saw traffic, and I saw police telling me to come down. They were about to climb the bridge when I told them, don't worry, I'll be down. When we got there, there was a crew of about four uh, newsmen with film and, and sound, and Vic Miles, who's a Channel 2 News reporter, was waiting for me. Meanwhile, Anthony was flashing a message down to fellow artist Edmund Sheehy. And what's he saying back to you? He sent out a message earlier, La Vida Estueno, which is Spanish. And, uh, Life is but a dream, huh? Finally, after setting off a ceremonial flare, Anthony descended into a field of blue, you might say. My color was green. Starting at the Verrazano Narrows, we had red, yellow, orange, green, blue, and violet all the way around the island. Colorful, huh? We're going to probably give you a very colorful summons or two or three or four. Um, the connections that, that happened in the piece were that we were all connected by doing similar acts and by visually connecting ourselves. We also did individual acts, and that's important, that it's individuals acting together. 
that's just facts, you know. That's yeah. just like factual information. Yeah. And I, maybe concentrate on that stuff. When I was climbing, I didn't feel as if I had a body. And when I saw the helicopters there, I was very moved because the reality of this event was occurring. We thrust ourselves out into the world because we felt connected and we wanted to connect with the world. This was a world public event. We made the connections through the television, screens and the radio, speakers and the newspapers. Was it worth it, Jean-Franco? Yeah. And I hope I, people will understand that they, it's like an embrace we have been doing. Seven people around here embracing New York. And I'm very sorry for the inconvenience and uh, for the trouble I've given to the authorities. Thank you, that's it. There was this terrible problem of a group of young energetic artists striving to create an artistic performance. The consequences of which, not the acts of which they were doing, but the consequences of which could result in unanticipated problems that could result in jail terms for felony convictions of from one to seven years. Again, not because of what they did in the sense of what was within their control, but what was that attributable to them legally. This kind of activity <laughs> doesn't mean the same thing when you devise it from what it means after the media have presented it to the people. It yes, means it something different in the eyes of the people from what it means in your eyes. This is something that could have potential uh, misinterpretation. Oh, of course. The, the way I was living before this event was fairly slow. And uh, I feel since that, that uh, Things have speeded up tremendously, and, and also that I've sort of lost, uh, you know, an attachment to a sort of uh, an idea of, of being too careful that I, I had before. Being, and I hope it will be lasting, but uh, you know, of course, I'm not sure. I felt for myself that it was an arrival at the world. Um, I had my passport with me. Uh, one Sunday morning, shortly after this episode, I looked at the bridges. It was early in the morning, and I realized that I'd learned something personally about myself from this whole experience. That if I never climbed a bridge, it wouldn't be because I was afraid of the climb. I am the kind of person who is more afraid of crossing a lawn when the sign says, do not trespass, than I am of jumping off a cliff into 50 feet of water. <laughs>